Hey Mike, I am making a video for you because you wanted to understand what gravitational waves are and whether this latest discovery of gravitational waves is interesting. And the answer is it's insanely important and interesting and fantastic. And the basic reason is because gravitational waves is basically the only other fundamental way of sending signals across long distances. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> the way we look up at the universe um, and gather information is that light comes to us. And what we used to call light is things that our eyes can see. But now what we call light in a more generic way is uh, light or electromagnetic waves of every possible frequency. Visible light is the uh, light that we can see that our eyes detect and it comes in a very tiny bandwidth of frequencies and it's the frequencies that the sun produces a lot of. The sun produces ultraviolet light too which we can't see but does affect us. When we look out in the universe we look at the visible light spectrum but we also look at many other spectrums. We look at lower frequency light, um, radio waves and microwaves. The background cosmic radiation is in the microwave frequency and that light um, came across the universe from very far away, so far away that the travel time it took to get to us was 13.7 billion years, which is to say that when that light left whatever its source was, the universe was 13.7 billion years younger. And so it left when the universe was actually very dense and hot. And in fact, the time before that, the universe was even denser and was opaque, meaning light couldn't travel past it. And so when we look in every possible direction, what we see is what we call the surface of last scattering. It was the last time the universe was molten hot. And at that moment, essentially a moment, uh, atoms formed. It cooled enough that atoms can form and atoms have this very beautiful quantum mechanical uh, property that if light hits it at the wrong frequency, it essentially passes through it. It uh, almost never scatters off of it. And that made the universe uh, transparent. And since that happened at a specific temperature, then roughly a specific time in the universe, then the background microwave radiation uh, left every part of the universe roughly at the same time before it came to us and we see this surface. So beyond the stars, beyond all other objects we see, we see the surface of last scattering. And that's very exciting because that surface um, contains information. If you could measure the exact temperature at different points on that surface, all that information uh, tells us a lot more about the structure of the universe and the contents of the universe. The frustrating part about that surface is you can't see past it um, with light, visible light. You can see stuff imprinted on that light that came before and, and then interpret what it is, but you can't really see past it. Uh, other things you can't see are black holes, for example, or very compact objects in the universe that don't emit a lot of light, but maybe are very heavy and, and were formed when they star collapsed. Those things are invisible to us. They don't emit light or they don't emit enough that we can see them. Um, gravity waves are different than uh, light or ultraviolet, infrared, gamma rays, x-rays, microwaves, radio waves, all these different waves which are all made of the same thing, electromagnetic fluctuations. Gravity waves are waves that are not made out of an electromagnetic Field. They're made out of something else. And the best physical description of what they are are fluctuations of the space itself. And yes, it turns out that space, the thing that we think everything is in, is in fact dynamical. It can fluctuate. And fluctuating space means length scales, actual physical length can change. And the physical length changing uh, while that seems crazy, it, it 
in some sense acts prosaically like a wave. You, you can have a fluctuation and that fluctuation moves through space and that's a wave, just like light is a wave, an electromagnetic wave flying through space. And the way electromagnetic waves like radio waves are produced, they're produced by say in, an, in a uh, transmitter, electrons bound, moving up and down. Electrons in the transmitter move up and down. They create an electric field that fluctuates and the electric field is sent out. And then you can detect it when it comes to your antenna, it moves the electrons up and down and that sends a signal and it moves electrons, which means it's a current and then the current moves through circuitry and that information can be recorded uh, or, or broadcast, made speakers vibrating and stuff like that. Um, in the same way, uh, gravitational waves uh, come from something fluctuating. Now, electromagnetic waves come from electrical objects like electrons moving. Gravitational waves come from things that gravity interacts with moving, but that's everything. So anything that moves around causes gravitational waves. But the uh, subtle part of this is that gravity is, bizarrely enough, insanely weak compared to um, the electromagnetic force. The only reason gravity seems to be so important in the universe and the electromagnetic force not so much is that the electromagnetic force has pluses and minuses, protons and electrons, and when they get together and form atoms, which they do strongly because the force is quite strong, um, they're very tiny and they cancel each other out. And so that means at long distances we don't really have big forces. Whereas gravity, there's only one kind of charge. There's not plus and minus. There's only one kind of charge, like energy, mass, and it's only attractive. So the more stuff you have, the more attractive it is. On the other hand, the actual force, like the force, the gravitational force or field from a proton or between two protons is, is uh, zillions times smaller than the electromagnetic force between them. So it's incredibly weak. And so the gravitational waves that are produced by moving stuff, like that I'm producing just by moving my hand up and down, um, it's so weak, for, for many years thought, never detectable. Um, this experiment has detected gravitational waves, a LIGO experiment. It's a laser interferometer. And, I'm, and you can look online to figure out how it works, but it's just an insanely cool and uh, brilliant uh, experiment and engineering marvel for many reasons. Um, this thing is sensitive enough to see contractions and expansions of distances uh, which are incredibly tiny compared to the size of the experiment. And what they're looking for are gravitational waves that come from masses moving around but insanely big masses like black holes, black holes moving around each other. Um, if you have a pair of black holes that are bound together and they oscillate like this going around each other, um, they lose energy because they send out waves, gravitational waves, and then as they get lose the energy they get closer and closer and they go faster and faster and eventually their horizons touch and they annihilate into a single black hole and after letting out a burst of gravitational wave energy. Um, <clears throat> and that that signal could be calculated very accurately in computer simulations that took decades to figure out how to do. And then um, you could match the form of the wave that you see in your gravity antenna um, to that type of event. And you can do it in multiple antennas, which is what they did on the Earth, and so that they know they're really seeing that characteristic signal and not some accidental vibration of the experiment or one of the experiments that happens to look exactly like two black holes, you know, in spiraling and annihilating, uh, you know, far in the distance. That means we can now see invisible things, things that are, don't interact with light, don't emit enough light, but they emit uh, gravitational light. And uh, they like to call it sound. It's not really sound, but you could say it's more like sound because it's physical contractions of stuff and sound are like pressure waves in air. Um, but so in that sense, we can hear 
those distances, we can, we can, if we can start to detect different types of frequencies of gravitational waves, um, we're really opening up a different way of seeing things in the universe that were truly invisible to us in the past. And so it, this individual discovery that the, the black holes in spiral and they, oh, those black holes exist and maybe there are more of them and it tells us more about stars and how they formed and, and, and what else is out there. Um, that individual discovery is interesting, but it's just that at that level. But the fact that we can do it, we've crossed the line where we can detect gravitational waves, um, is uh, truly revolutionary because now you can see the universe with something different than light. You can see it with gravitational waves. And so the objects you can see and the distances you can see are very, very different than what you can see with all frequencies of light. And that surface of last scattering where light, you know, comes from it, the last hit before it comes towards us, and therefore we see this surface in the microwave frequencies in all directions, and we can't see past it because the universe was too hot and dense, etc. cetera. Uh, gravity waves do go through that surface because they go through everything. And that means you can see farther and farther back to truly earliest times um, in the universe. And so that's one of the sort of grand prizes with this. And the fact we can do it is astounding. And, uh, and now we see where the road is leading. So that's what's so incredible about this. Yes, we proved Einstein's right again. Who gives a crap? We, we've known general relativity is so incredibly correct for a very long time. That's not the big news. The big news is um, uh, like we were blind and now we could see and we can see and we don't know what we're going to see, but we uh, highly suspect we're going to be surprised a lot for the next many years to come.